are back right here at Hialeah Park. Don't forget the National Horse Players Championship qualifier is coming here next Sunday. Not this Sunday, next Sunday. A shot at $10,000 in the grand. Grand prize is $5,000, but they're giving away $10,000 here at the Champion Simulcast Center. So come on out here. We're going to be out here broadcasting in the morning or midday-like. We'll be out here for a couple of hours doing our thing, and then we take off to the East-West Shrine game. But we are going to be out here uh, checking it out. So uh, if you want to come on by and join, if you want to find out more, go to HialeahPark.com. We are going to get in contact now with Jason Turner, who covers Utah State for the Herald Journal. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll get into a, a little Jordan Love talk as uh, Jordan Love has declared for the NFL draft. And uh, the thing about jo Jordan is one of those cats that a lot of people, like myself, are big fans of. And a guy that I, I think really uh, brings a lot to the table because when you watch him, he's got, ec I mean, incredible athletic ability. He's got a whip of an arm. He can make any throw he wants out there. And there are moments where you see him and you know that the dude is special because there are, there are times where he makes throws that, you're like, okay, only a few guys on the planet can make that kind of throw. Now, he does have his negative moments, okay? Like any young quarterback, he does make mistakes. Although I'm one of those guys that I believe he's made a lot of his mistakes because he doesn't play on a really good team. This is a guy that threw 20 touchdowns and 17 interceptions. He's going to take some chances and, you know, I mean, listen, he just lost a bowl game 51-41 to Kent State. It's not like Kent State is lighting up the world. They ended up 7-6, and six, but they lit up Utah State for 51 points. That tells you kind of all you need to know. I, I mean, I mean, we're, we're going to talk to Jason now, and we'll get his thoughts on it, and he's around Jordan all the time, so we'll get a better feel for it from a guy that, that, that covers him on an everyday basis. How are we doing there, uh, Billy? No answer. No response to the text. Okay, we are uh, awaiting. Uh, Holding pattern, sir. All right, we are awaiting there. Reach out to our boy John and see if he can, uh, if he has any luck there too. Uh, anyway, so uh, we will get in contact with uh, Jason Turner uh, hopefully shortly here. Things happen. You never know. He is out west. Sometimes you get that that time confused with the eastern time slot and wherever the hell he's at out well, i don't know utah i guess is west right is that uh yes that yeah, would definitely mountain, be right? west yes it's not mountain right uh or maybe mountain you know what utah's on the other side of the continental divide it might be Pacific. might be mountain, right might be like denver time all right so it might be too no it's a little right? further west so that's it, what i'm saying it's on the other side oh, okay so wyoming's you, east of okay so they're further west okay, yeah they so may maybe. be they may be pacific well either way uh, they're either two or three hours behind us, so uh, sometimes that also becomes a, a little bit of confusion. So we'll, we'll we'll try to get in contact with him. But I like this kid. Uh, he lay, he's got a lot. Again, you're not you're not taking him with number five overall. Okay, if anything, you're taking him with that third pick in the first round or somewhere in the second round, uh, unless. Well, I, you know what? I shouldn't say that. I've had enough experiences with this. I shouldn't say that. I was dumb on my part. Let's see what happens in the Senior Bowl. Okay? You might have a team like Chicago who uh, moves up to number two, Trubisky. Okay? No, no. What I'm saying is if he, if he like, smokes it in, in the Senior Bowl, his draft stock will soar. Okay? It's already going to soar because of his physical ability, his talents. And people are going to be wowed with that because, okay, if we can harness that, okay, and, and get him to play efficiently, we're going to have ourselves a hell of a quarterback. So that's kind of, I think, the trick there with, uh, with Jordan Love. So we'll find out uh, from Jason Turner if we're able to get in contact with him from the Herald Journal. Uh, Will Carroll is set to join us at 2.30. So we'll have a little fun uh, with Will. My man Steve Calabro is going to come by at 3 o'clock. Of course, uh, 
uh, casino manager here at Hialeah Park. So we'll have some fun with Steve, and we'll and we'll pick our parlay, which we haven't hit yet. What happened with last week's parlay? Do we know who won and who lost and all that stuff? I don't even remember anymore. I'm sitting here trying to think of what my play was, and I can't even remember my own. Well, I know I went a- against something that was. One of them was Houston. One of them was Tampa. Yeah, I don't remember now. I don't remember at all now. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta. I wonder if I still have the. You know uh, who knows? Steve knows. That's it. Well, actually, you know what we know. Now that I think about it. Uh, we have the ticket. He did send us the ticket. So that's where I, I think we do have we do have our, uh, our our proof, my man, of what it was when we when we did do the um, the parlay, which by the way, we have yet to hit on that parlay so far. And it's definitely not well, my we, fault. We, uh, we did get two out of three it's, that paid. It's, it's usually, uh, I usually make the right picks. It's usually Bill that screws it all up. Here we go. Here are the picks. We had Atlanta versus Tampa. Okay. The over 47 and a half. I think that was Steve's. Then Tennessee and Houston. And Houston a win by three and a half. Which, oh, wait a minute. That's mine. But you know what? I got screwed in that one because I didn't know that they were going to rest Watson. So they rested Watson, and Houston ended up winning. So I, I t- that's mine. I, I lost it for sure. And then San Fran and Seattle, and San Fran will win by three. Did they win? I know they won. They won. They won. Did they? They won comfortably, right? So there you go. Did the Atlanta? The Atlanta Tampa? Did it hit the over forty-seven? I think it did. Forty-seven and a half. I want to say. 22-29, right? Oh. The interception at the end of the game, 22-29, 20, 20, 20, something like that, right? Oh, well, there you go. Well, you, well that that's. That, that was Jameis's pick, pick six. He yes. started his rookie contract with the pick six, and he ended his rookie contract with the pick six. Yes, which, again, I don't know. Big shocker I don't know. there. Big I, shocker. But, see, I got screwed on the Tennessee-Houston one. I didn't know that they were going to bench the Houston guys. Okay, you know what? If that's the case, you ready? The week before, the one that we ended up winning two out of three, mine, mine pushed because of yeah, but that's Houston not, that's, having five interceptions that's not, that's again. Not, that's, yeah. No, that's not, that's not – you don't get a break for that. That's still a bad pick. This is the, – the line changes. Oh, I bet you the God. line wasn't excuses. even that. Excuses. I bet you the line was not three – was not uh, three and a half – after the benching of those guys. I'm sure nobody, of that. Nobody, nobody for Houston was in that game. I know. Well, I didn't know that. I have Hopkins. And he I had play. no yeah. idea that they were going to do that. When we made that pick, I had no idea that they were benching all those guys. And the Atlanta, by the way, the Atlanta Falcons one went to 50. So it did hit the over. 28 the to 20, 28, 22. You were yeah. pretty close. Yeah. You're right there. I think you were off yeah, the by game, a point. The game, ended, the, the game ended with the pick six, and it ends it, and you don't have to kick the extra points. Right. So. That's what it is. So there you go. What a shame. But, again, I, that, that one's kind of bogus. I didn't know that they were going to bench those guys. That sucks. All right, what do we got here on the YouTube chat board? Uh, let's see. Premier reviewer, he is doing the same thing LBJ did when he left Miami. Uh, Ty Tom for Ty Ty Tom for giving. Oh, thank Tom, thank you Tom for giving us Jimmy G. Oh, Myron, because you're you're a, a Niners fan. Even though in his full season, people forget that plus his injury last year regressed his progress. He's played all right this year. He hasn't played great, but he's been good enough. You you can win a Super Bowl the way he's playing. Jordan Love hasn't played against quality teams, so he is a project. I, I, well, of course he's a project, dude. If he wasn't a project, you'd take him top ten. You know, when you start taking them late first and second rounds, it's because they got holes in their game. Of course they're projects. Pat fans are having nightmares that Brady retires and Belichick goes to the Cowboys. Belichick's not going to go to the Cowboys. Because, remember, Belichick would have to 
you'd neuter the the old man and the son if Belichick goes there. Belichick's not going to go to Dallas and take orders from anybody. <laughs> okay? He's the guy with all the titles, not them. Could you see Jerry Jones and Belichick? No. <laughs> no, just like I I can't see, um, what's it called, Urban Meyer. They've got Urban Meyer on Another that Another headstrong, yeah. I, I just can't see that, man. No way. Uh, uh, Dougie Fresh. Big O, two-a-days. Is Shula your boss? Thank you, sir. I will make an announcement about your show. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. You know what's one I heard this morning, man? Yes. Um, Keyshawn was stating the fact that if you think about it, look at all the talent that Dallas has had. What is the thing that Jerry Jones – what's 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 the bad thing that Jerry Jones has done? And basically his point was – the only thing he does is have press conference after the game. But he did that stuff with Jimmy Johnson. He did that stuff when Barry no, Switzer not, was No, not, not after the game like that, no. He did not. He did not. He started to do that after with Jimmy at the end, and that's why Jimmy, Jimmy left. left. Okay? And so, and with Parcells, he said he wasn't going to meddle, and then he meddled with the whole T.O. thing, and then that's what kind of drew the line, and he was like, okay, I'm out of here. Keep- that's, why, that's why he always called him the player. He didn't even call him T.O. or Terrell or what. He just called him the player. And I he, mean, they were talking about Dow- – I mean, they have um, 15 players on their roster that have been in Pro Bowls more than any other team. No, they're loaded. Their, their offensive line loaded. costs them $53 million a year against they the cap. They are yes. loaded. And bottom line, you know, he was like – Jerry's put together a good team. It, it, the problem is the coach. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking – well. He, Keyshawn, you, the way you think and the way you act, you would be okay with Jerry, John, Jerry Jones, you know? Right. But, He's that guy. Uh, and it's also, it's also lazy to just say it's the coach when there are other factors out there. You're not going to respect your coach like I've talked about before on this show when the owner is the guy that really is undercutting you and, tell, and talking about how good the team played or didn't play. Uh, complimenting the other coach and uh, I mean his 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 affinity and his love for Mike Zimmer after they after the Vikings beat him it was like it was embarrassing for for Jason and if any player sees that it's like man this guy likes Mike Zimmer more than he likes our coach and so then what player is then going to respect your coach when the owner's not respecting him and that's where, you know, Keyshawn is wrong. Keyshawn's not looking at the big picture. I am not going to defend Jason Garrett, the coach. No. But I cannot defend the situation that would put any coach in that position at a disadvantage. Not just Jason Garrett. Right. And for you to overcome that is almost near impossible to do that. Yeah, and he does it he constantly. It, 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 he doesn't get it. He's, he's so clueless. Yeah. Okay. How, how do you see the situation with Rivera? Because Snyder, you know what I mean? He's right there along well, the lines I, of Jerry Jones. Well, I already talked about that earlier with Rivera, and I just think it's one of those where, you know. It's Snyder's not, finally clued in? Yeah, Snyder, I think, kind of stepped aside because the way Rivera was talking about that, it, this is, you know, going to be, you know, his vision and everything. Uh, and that the owner told him that, hey, you know, I want you to lead. I want you to this to be your last job. That you want you want to you collect believe, unemployment. Do you believe Snyder, man? I, I, it's hard to believe Snyder at right, all. Right. But what I do believe is that he might be doing it at the moment, and so at least he gives him the stage at the moment, and then we'll see what happens a year from now or two years from now. And does he start to meddle? Does he start to get in the back way? Back to his old bag and, and, of tricks. And that's when, that's when Rivera will walk out. I can guarantee you that. But, yeah, because he doesn't come across as a guy that is going to tolerate that crap. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. So, that, that, to me, that's the way that is going to end up working out. But I got to we'll say, see. considering the situation and the uh, past relationship with the uh, general manager at the Giants, man, Pretty nice move by Washington, man, to head him off. A great move by Washington. They got got to give him some props there. They got themselves one hell of a coach. And by the way, for those of you that are watching on YouTube, uh, make sure you give us the thumbs up there. You know, put in the like there, the thumbs up.
help us uh, generate more attention to the broadcast. Tell folks about the broadcast. Tell folks to follow us on uh, YouTube at Big O Radio Show. That way we can get to 1,000 subscribers as soon as possible. Yeah, make already... everybody in your ho- household subscribe. Everybody in your neighborhood subscribe. Exactly. The guy that lives behind you, subscribe. Yes, yes. And we're already already at a nice clip. We're already at 739. So nice. We're two, we're only Good two, job. Or, Good or, job, guys. We're only 260 away from it, so we can uh, get to that point and give you awesome coverage over at the East West Shrine, the Senior Bowl, Combine, all kinds of stuff that you guys are going to want. Trust me. Uh, so this is uh, going to be very, very important. Oh, so, I have to give you an update here. Um, yes. I did get with John. John said he sent him a text. He has not contacted me back. We're not looking good here, sir. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so we have, uh, we have lost our, uh, our Utah State insider for Jordan that's, Love. That's just man. for now. That's just for now. Yeah, That's man. just for now. So I was looking forward to it, man. I wanted to talk a little Jordan Love on the show. This is one of those guys that I'm kind of – I can't wait to see – personally, I can't wait to see him at the Senior Bowl because I, I really want to see how the kid handles the atmosphere, how he plays with everybody else because that's the thing. When you come to the Senior Bowl, you're, you're now joined with a whole bunch of linemen – receivers, running backs you've never played with, tight ends, and you've got to adjust quickly to the way they're playing, their speed, all of that, ball placement, all of that stuff. And I like seeing which are the quarterbacks that can adjust quickly to that because those, to me, are the guys that can make an easier transition to the NFL. The guy that really struggles with it, I kind I am concerned with that, you know? So that that's where I would tell you that th- this – this move here that we get to see Jordan Love in the Senior Bowl, it's going to be awesome, man. It's going to be awesome. I, I, be I a would, lot of fun. I would think another thing with the Senior Bowl, like you were talking about Love having a bunch of not adequate guys around him and the competition you're playing against, these are all the best of college. So you got better players with you yes. and better players going against you yeah, it's, and really see what you got. He's not where he was at Utah State that it looked like he was at a disadvantage pretty much every week because, uh, I mean, the talent around him did not look good. Well, when you're like you said, when you're losing to Kent State, not to take anything away from him, you know, good little school, blah, but when you get, no. Okay. You, sh- you shouldn't get beat by Kent State. Myron says, oh, can you ask Will about Quan Alexander's progress for my Niners since he was practicing yesterday on his blue jersey? All right, well, we will ask about Quan Alexander. My man, let me write it down before I forget because I got a list of players here that I want to talk about. And we will ask, since the Niners are resting this week, because, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, YouTube fan is uh is a Niners lucky fan because they got the bye week. It's a beautiful thing. Not only do you have your 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 team, your favorite team is in the playoffs, but they get the bye week. So good for you, Myron. Yeah, and as long as you're alive, everybody's got to come to your place. That's right. Myron says, "I always share the channel." Oh well, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Ty from the Bronx says, uh, "Preach, Big O, preach." He he loves Jordan Love. Ty is a huge Jordan Love fan. And listen, he is one of those kids that the talent is intoxicating. It is. Because he's got athleticism. He's got a hell of an arm. He's a good kid overall, too. No no real baggage. He's just not a finished product. And that's what you've got to kind of polish up. And hopefully you can make, you know, the rough edges... Of, of of that coal shine it up and make it a diamond uh when it's all said and done that's going to be the challenge for anybody but there's a lot to work with there that's the thing about jordan love that when you see him you're impressed that okay this kid's got the goods it's not like he lacks anything that physically he's got to try to overcome no that's not the issue okay now is he green yeah like a lot of kids that are coming out of college and going to the NFL. Most of them aren't even close to being ready to, you know, throw the ball around in the NFL. Hey, look, look, Pat Mahomes, who's 
taken the league by storm, Andy Reid had him sit for the first year so he could kind of learn things, which was really, really smart. And, and it's interesting because with the Mahomes thing, he didn't come in with that kind of pressure that you got to play him. That's a nice advantage. If you have Jarrett Stidham this year on the Dolphins, you end up playing him because of the quarterback situation. But because you have Tom Brady, you give him the opportunity to sit the whole year, play a couple times during blowouts, so it doesn't cost you anything, but at the same time, it does give him a little experience. Those kind of things. But it's funny that when you're in a desperate situation where, you're, where your team needs the quarterback, you rush and push that square peg into the round hole. And in hell, that's how I grew up, that most quarterbacks just were drafted and sat. It, you never even thought about playing him pretty much. You, like, always wanted to have a veteran first to start off and then ease the kid in is what they used to do. Elway was one, if I remember correctly, that was thrown to the Wolves first year, right? Um, and Peyton. Yes. They were both from yeah. day one. Here you are. You're the franchise. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Both of them Hall of Famers. They they – did not have very successful first seasons. Very pedestrian, like 15 in the, in the teens area, if I'm mistaken, interception-wise both, correct? Yes. Yes. No doubt. Uh, all right, let's... Uh, we got to get ready for Will Carrollo. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And don't forget that, of course, the show is proudly brought to you by the Vape and Smoke Shop in West Pines. And remember, if you mention the Big O Show, you're going to get 10 to 20% off anything in the entire store. Vape and Smoke Shop in West Pines. Mention yours truly, 954-613-3367. You can also visit them on social media at VSS. West Pines, and yes, they have CBD products, which will help for anxiety, anti-anxiety, inhibits uh, cancer cell growth, neuroprotectors, uh, also reduces inflammation, relieves pain like arthritis, chronic pain, chronic nerve pain, also helps with insomnia, and provides deep and restful sleep, and yes, CBD is legal, folks, so yes, head on down to VSS West Pines. Check it out on social media, Instagram or Facebook. Call Jose, all the guys out there, 954-613-3367, the Vape and Smoke Shop in West Pines. We are back here at Hialeah Park, baby. Come on out. You know, they've got uh, the uh, DJ tonight down at the Flamingo Lounge. They've got all the gaming action. They've got over 900 machines. Uh, they are also a smoke-free casino, so nobody's going to be smoking up a storm next to you. Uh, they, the people can go outside and smoke, and they also have machines outside, the smoking hot slots. So you get, to, and it's cool air there too. They've got, so you can enjoy the outside if you want. If you want to enjoy your cigar, your cigarette, all that good stuff, but inside, smoke-free. So you're good. So if you want to do that, you can come on out here tonight. Go to the poker room. Enjoy a little poker there. Come on, man. Food. Great food out here at Hialeah Park, man. And, of course, the Champion Simulcast Center where you get to wager on all the tracks across the country like uh, a lot of these gentlemen are doing right now, wagering all over the country, which is a beautiful thing. Let me just thank you for the uh, Gator Bites and the skirt steak I had with the vegetables and the uh, awesome lunch today, brother. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you're, you're living You were life. a contributing factor to that there, buddy. Yeah, you're living life. You, Why, wow, you didn't get free food in the last place you worked at? All right. Uh, seven, we got Will Carroll for you right uh, now, uh, man. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. 786-322-1105 is the accidentlawfirm.com text line. 786-322-1105. Time to talk. To the injury expert himself, Will Carroll. We've got a bunch of injuries affecting some of these teams in the uh, playoffs. And obviously, we want to find out who's in, who's out. Nobody better than Will Carroll. Will the Thrill, how you doing, my man? 
I'm doing great. I'm down here at the uh, American Baseball Coaches Association convention this week. Uh, down in Nashville, always a good town to be uh, be out and about in on a weekend. So excited about that. Excited about the playoffs. We got some good matchups. Yeah, before I get into that, let me ask you something. What did you think of that report? I think it was the commissioner that brought it out that they were suggesting on, on eliminating like 100 minor league teams. What's up with that? Yeah, I don't think it's good for baseball. Yeah, I don't think uh, it's good for that. baseball. Uh, yeah, you know, I do think they have to get control of the development process because what we've seen is it's not working. Why do we have seven teams? Uh, the problem is we do have seven teams, and you don't want to lose baseball in a place like Nashville, in a place uh, like Indianapolis, in a place like Binghamton, which is one of the ones. I mean, what happens to the Rumble Pony? We've got to figure out how to make it good for baseball. But the problem is that, uh, you know, the system has just broken down. From what Branch Rickey first uh, started when he was in St. Louis, uh, it's just not that anymore. Uh, we've got to figure out a middle ground. And baseball has bigger problems than minor league. They're going to have to find a middle ground on salary. They're going to have to figure out how to get around this tax. When a team like Boston is cutting salary and trading off uh, Mookie Betts, because they need salary relief, so they have to tie uh, David Price to him like an anchor. That's bad for baseball. Well, that and and to me, that's kind of where it comes from. That you know, when people were talking about, well, revenues are still. Eh, I think the revenues are uh, now starting to, uh, you know, slow down to a point that I think that that's why they want to eliminate so many minor league teams because of the expenses, and they're trying to. Well, limit it's not that. an expense though. The, the expense is not the players. The players make less than $10,000 a year, much less than minimum wage. They actually spent uh, $10 million lobbying Congress to get out of a law that made them have to pay players the minimum wage. Think about this. There's no other industry in the country that we allow this. And now uh, they're having to deal with California. They might move all the teams out of California because of some laws that they just passed there that work against things like Uber and Lyft. You wouldn't think about baseball as the gig economy, uh, but that's really what it's become. So we've got to figure this out. Look, revenues are $10 billion, and the luxury tax, which is in effect a salary cap, hasn't moved in 10 years. Uh, I'm not just blaming the commissioner's office. Uh, the, the union has to get there. Uh, I just hope it doesn't take another strike to really get some movement and some change. Wow, that's uh, that's crazy, man. Uh, a Niners fan wants to know about Quan Alexander. What's the latest, and will he be ready in another week? Yeah, he, he will be. And and certainly, you know, that's a weird game that they had with Seattle. There's even so much controversy at the end. Uh, and the question of, did you want to win? Uh, I think that's the one thing, is that uh, not only do you win the division, you get to hang a banner for what that's worth, the week off is really going to help them. Kittle's banged up. Alexander's banged up. Garoppolo is very banged up. He's taken a lot of hits this year. Uh, he's played every game, and he's played well. Uh, but he, I think the injuries are really starting to wear on him. So that week off, they get, and Seattle doesn't, not to mention uh, the uh, having to play on the road, uh, it's going to be a tough one for them. I think Juan Alexander's going to play. I think he's going to play well. But the Niners haven't been in the playoffs for a while. And one of the things that I find interesting, both here and the teams that haven't been in the playoffs, you're playing extra games, uh, hopefully more than one, uh, that rest week does mean something to them. For a team like the Patriots, who's used to having the bye week, how do they adjust, especially for a team that's uh, dealing with week-to-week injury in Julian Edelman? Uh, their running backs have been uh, changing week-to-week for years just because uh, they've got three or four guys and they go with whoever the hot hand is, whoever the best matchup is. I think that one's going to be fascinating because they're just not used to not having the buy. Oh, it's crazy stuff, man. Will Carroll, of course, the injury expert, joining us here on the program. And, of course, you can follow him on Twitter, at Injury Expert. All right, Will, explain to me, man. J.J. Watt, uh, he's going to play. He tore this yeah. pack. Uh, I, I, I'd love to find a prop because I think he's going to get injured again in this game. I, I don't know yeah. how in the world he's going to stay in one piece, especially when we're talking about an injury like a peck where he's got to use that arm and that shoulder to pull and tug and block and whatever. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. Tell me. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, sometimes doctors and teams need to save people from themselves. But J.J. Watt's an interesting character. You know, 
he has a back problem a couple years ago and was squatting days after surgery. Uh, you know, no judgment here, but I think he likes pain. Um, I think he's okay with it. And I think the idea that the downside for him is that he's going to have to have the surgery again. They're going to have to stitch it back together and he's going to go through another three months of rehab. I don't think that bothers him. I think he's perfectly okay with that. I don't think it's healed. I don't think it's possible. Uh, he is human. Uh, so that tendon is very much at risk. Uh, I don't expect him to get through a game. I say it's about 50, 50, whether he overstresses it and it completely tears right in the middle. Um, but that's the risk. He knows the risk. I'm not going to stop him from doing it because it's not going to cost him anything. Like I said, he just have to have the surgery again. And if he doesn't mind, why should I? Uh, uh, it blows me away. All right. Will, Will Fuller is always injured. He's got the growing injury now. What's the latest? Yeah, you know, there, there are a lot of guys like this. John Ross for the Bengals, Tyree Kill. Uh, these guys are Ferrari. They're really, really fast. They take the turns. Um, but, man, they're never quite right. They always seem to be in the shop. There always seems to be something a little bit wrong with them. Uh, and if they're not perfect, they're not any good at all. So with this latest injury, a groin strain, he's not going to be able to get off the line. Uh, if you press him, he's, he's certainly not a big guy. He can't rely on his physicality the way – uh, you know, a big tight end or somebody like a Julio Jones would. So I think it's going to be really tough for him. Obviously, he takes a little bit of the heat off Hopkins. Uh, you don't normally double Fuller, but you at least have to think about him running past the corner and getting deep. Uh, so you have to play him that way. I don't think they're going to have to. If he can't get off the line, he can't get deep. So they'll just press him to, if he plays with this groin strain. I think he's about 60-40 to play. It is a playoff game. Uh, and certainly they're going to be able to say, what do you mean you can't go? J.J. Watts only six weeks out of surgery, and he's going. Uh, that sort of mythology I don't think is good for the game. Okay. Tunsil has an ankle injury. What's the latest with Laramie Tunsil? Yeah. You know, Tunsil's uh, a guy you're certainly familiar with. Mm -hmm. uh, but any lineman, if they don't have a good base, they're not going to be able to block. Uh, you don't think about quickness being a major uh, issue for a guy, but Tunsil really relies much more on his quickness and his footwork than he does his pure strength. He's not going to go out there and just, you know, beat somebody around. He's not one of those holy linemen uh, like a Quentin Nelson. So if he doesn't have a stable base, if he doesn't have a quickness, he's not going to be a very good lineman. Uh, so they're going to test him real early and often. You're going to see a lot of stunts in front of him. You're going to see him trying to bull rush and spin. Uh, I think it's going to be very, very tough for him. Uh, I don't think he adjusts well. So he's one of those players that has to be pretty close to 100% to be effective. All right, uh, we move on. Dalvin Cook, man, the poor kid looks like he is injury prone. Coming back from that shoulder, uh, he's expected to play, but how healthy is he? Healthy enough. Uh, I think the injury prone tag is a little early on him. You know, he flew out an ACL. That happens. It's all too common in the NFL and other sports. Uh, this sternal clavicular problem, it's not really shoulder. The sternal clavicular joint is in between your clavicle, your collarbone, and your sternum, your breast bone. So if you think of it uh, as, as the central end of your collarbone, your pair of collarbones there, that just doesn't move. I mean, if you're sitting there, just press on it. It doesn't move very much. His deal. <laughs> That's not good. You might remember Tyreek Hill, who I mentioned earlier. He had that sternal clavicular dislocation. Uh, it went in, and obviously... There's things like your heart and your lungs that you really don't want a, a bone moving in on. Uh, Cook didn't have that, but it is painful, and he's obviously going to take shots. He's going to be wearing some kind of protection and padding underneath. I don't think he's going to have a problem with it. Um, you know, if he takes a hit, and he's going to, we'll see how he reacts. But we're really not going to be able to test that until he gets out there, and he's just going to hope he doesn't take one of those big hits. Edelman with the shoulder. What's the latest there? Brady doesn't have too many weapons. Yeah, shoulder's not the problem for him. Yeah, it's, it's sore, but uh, you land on your shoulder, it gets sore. The real problem for Edelman is one that's going to be, uh, he's going to have to deal with for the rest of his career and the rest of his, well, at least part of his life. Uh, he's got tendinosis. Uh, a lot of us are familiar with tendinitis, which is simple swelling of a tendon. Uh, in, his, in his case, it's the patellar tendon. Uh, he's actually got cellular changes in that tendon. It's gone beyond swelling. That tendon, the cellular structure, has basically given up. In some cases, you'll actually see it die. 
and you have to cut it away. Somewhere down the line, I don't mean anytime soon, he'll probably have to have a knee replacement. But you know what? A lot of players in the NFL are going to have those. Uh, you can always see him coming to the, the uh, Hall of Fame or, or you see the old-timers walking out to the Ring of Honor and they got that very distinctive shuffle uh, of somebody who's had double knee replacement or maybe a hip replacement. Yeah. So with Edelman, they're just going week to week on him, hoping they can get him through. This is a problem that's not going to go away. I think we're talking about his career being shortened. But you know what? It's been a pretty good one. He seems to have a pretty darn good life. Oh, yeah. Come on. Have you seen the models that guy's been banging for years? <laughs> Come on. All right. Zach Ertz and the ribs. What's this madman going to do this week? Yeah, he's going to play. Um, you know, they were worried a little bit about where the fracture was. You think about the ribs. They go basically all the way around your body and protect your internal organs. Again, a very important thing. Um his was very near his spine, uh, in the back there. They come off the spine and come around your side. So people normally think uh, of a fracture on the side. He had his very near the back. They were worried a little bit about the pain. Uh, it's obviously painful to get hit. He can wear rib protectors. Uh, I actually just spoke to the guys uh, who put together his uh, company called Unequal. Uh, here's a little sneak preview. They're about to put out a new batting helmet called the Unhelmet. Uh, just Google it. It's pretty amazing. Uh, instead of a batting helmet like we're used to, they've got one that goes under a simple baseball cap. Uh, and it weighs, uh, I think it was one third of the, uh, the two pound batting helmet you have now. Pretty amazing. But they're going to put, uh, it's made out of Kevlar, a vest on earth. I don't think he'll have a problem with it. Painful, yes, but they're football players. All right. Lane Johnson with the ankle. Does it look like he's out for this game? does look like he's going to be out. They're going to give him every chance, so I'll call it a game-time decision. It would surprise me if he played, but you know what? Playoff games, NFL, mythology, they're going to try to get out there. But a lot like Tunsil, if he doesn't have a stable base, he can't do anything. You know, if you watch the way that Doug Peterson offense works, they try to run guys around. They'll let a, a guy get a step on him and just push him past when he takes a step up. He's mobile enough that he can get around. Uh, without Johnson, they're in trouble. You know, Philadelphia has played through injuries and done well uh, for the past couple of seasons going all the way back to their Super Bowl year. Uh, but Johnson, he's a tough guy. They're going to give him every chance, but I just don't see it work. All right, Oladipo in your uh, backyard there. The Pacers have been one of the best stories in the NBA this season without their best player. When is their best player returning? They don't know. <laughs> Simply put, uh, Victor Oladipo is ready to come back physically, um, but mentally it doesn't seem like it is. Now, the fact that they're playing so well, that, that Turner and Sabonis have turned into players that the scouts have told us they're going to turn into, uh, that the team is playing well, that McConnell has turned into uh, exactly what they needed. Oladipo would seem to put them over the top, but he's got to want to play. And so far he hasn't really shown that he's in any rush. Now, I don't think that the Pacers are really pushing him, they want to make sure that leg uh, holds together. Sewing a tendon back together, as we said, very, very difficult, very, very complex. But he's been doing all the physical. Uh, he's all but medically cleared to play. So we could see him back in early January. I don't think we will. I think it's going to be around the all-star break. Uh, you know, if you had asked me whether we'd see Zion Williamson uh, before Oladipo, I probably would have said no until this week. But I think we're on track for that. All right, so you're good with Zion. That's the latest there. He, he should be coming back in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Siakam with a growing injury. What's the latest there? Yeah, hey, slow, slow progress. Again, they're going to be very, very conservative with it because his long, lean athleticism uh, relies on the, on a lot of lateral motion, and that's exactly what the groin does. With that strain, he just can't move, and if he can't move, he can't play. Wow. All right, uh, Bradley Beal, leg. We wrap it up with that one. What's the latest? Because the Wizards definitely need him. Yeah, they definitely need him. And again, this is one where you've got to think about function. Um, again, different kind of player. Uh, athletic, quick, uh, has to be able to move both laterally and vertically, which is one that you don't normally think about. If, if he can't not only jump, so landing is evidently the problem for Beal. Uh, you can imagine, uh, if you can't land, you can't get out there on the hard court. 
so I think it's going to be a little while longer yet on Beal. Uh, we'll have to see exactly how that one goes. This is one that I'm watching closely because I think it's going to take a little longer than a lot of people expect. Hey, let me ask you, on John Wall, how bad is that injury? Is, like, is, is his career like going to be over? Is he going to be a shell of... Or, or does he have any chance on bouncing back and being himself? He does have a chance. You know, there are a lot of injuries where we just don't know. Like Oladipo's injury. Nobody else has had this injury and been this kind of player. So you kind of go, well, I don't know. Uh, you think he can come back. Uh, and then there's situations like Achilles hit. Ten years ago, that was a career in. Five years ago, it was a career changer. Now it's, now we'll see in six months. So things do change. I think with Wall, uh, he's got a chance to come back, but there's just nothing to base it off of. We can't say, this guy had the same thing and is the same kind of player. So I think it'll be this. He's kind of in the same boat as Oladipo. Uh, he's just a little older. All right, one more thing I am going to ask you before you go. Uh, Tua is going to make some kind of an announcement. I can't imagine he's making an announcement to say that he's staying. But just out of curiosity, from what you know, you've told us a lot about this injury. You think it's kind of Dennis Pitta-like. Does, do you get an inclination that maybe he should stay or he should go? What do you think how he handles all of this? You know, I, I don't think he should stay. I don't think it's good. You know, Trevor Lawrence is coming out next year. There's some good quarterbacks as well. Uh, you know, if, if he doesn't come back well, uh, they're going to hold that against him. What's the last guy who stayed to be a senior and had, you know, moved himself up in the draft. I can't think of one. Uh, with Tua's hip injury, you do have to worry about it, but there are some indications uh, talking to people around the Alabama program, they think Tua just likes being there. They like playing with his brother. That he loves the college experience. I thought college was fun, but you know what? I think being a millionaire would be fun too. Yes. Uh, and being able, to, <laughs> being able to play and be paid and get set up, uh, Everybody I've talked to thinks he doesn't get past Miami, that they're perfectly willing to wait a while on him. Uh, and it's hard to say that's not a good move. I'm curious to see what Shane Gailey would do with a, a big, uh, strong, and accurate passer like, like Tua is. And I do think Tua is going to come back. I just don't think you're going to see him in 2020. Uh, and if he thinks he's going to play and play at Alabama, I just don't see the upside. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you. I just and and, and the, on the NFL side, I've even said this that if you do take him at five, you need to then follow up with another quarterback somewhere in that early second or third rounds, just to kind of cover your ass and bring another guy in because Tua's really not going to play in 2020. So you might as well keep him on the yeah. bench and then and then try to develop another kid, and you never know what happens. Yeah, kind of the Kirk Cousins plan. Right. Um, Right. I'm not sure I buy that just because there's so many needs to have to go at. And because there are some secondary quarterbacks out on the market, um, you know, if you were going to go into the next season as the Dolphins with another year of Ryan Fitzpatrick uh, and you find a third quarterback who's kind of a project, you know, a guy who's maybe been in a couple camps, maybe a guy who has a great season for the XFL, one of those, uh, I'm just not sure I would spend uh, that high of draft capital unless – Maybe you go into the fifth or sixth round and you're looking for the next Tom Brady or Gardner Minshew. Those guys are there. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, you might get a Jordan Love. Might be a nice little project in the second yeah, round. Yeah, he's not, he's not going to be <laughs> second huh? round. Yeah, I don't know if I'd go first and second round. Uh, but Love is moving up the boards. I think I know. a lot of people are going to know his name next year. And you already know it. Yeah, no, I, and I think, I think in two weeks when we go to the Senior Bowl, uh, and, and he, if he balls out, then that's when his stock will explode because of his athleticism. So, yeah, I'm, w I'm with you there, no doubt about it. Follow him on Twitter at Injury Expert. He is Will Carroll. Will, you are the best, my brother. Thank you for all the knowledge. Thanks a lot, guys. Happy New Year. There you go. The great Will Carroll, baby. Love it. All right, it's always good to have him on. Plus, you can't make an, a, a sports investment decision without the injury expert so you can find out about some of these key injuries. You know what I'm saying? I was just going to say, Steve's supposed to be joining us at 3, and he is here in the yes, flesh. He's already, he's already ready to go, ready to rock. It's a beautiful You're thing. You're astounding isn't it? in this capacity, Steve. Yes, he is. No doubt about it. You know who's also astounding? 
Toyota of Hollywood, baby. They've got over 1,500 Toyotas in stock. What are you waiting for, folks? Get on down there. 1841 North State Road 7. Hey, it's uh, a couple of blocks south of that uh, big giant guitar there on the turnpike. That's why we want you to get on down there to, of course, Toyota of Hollywood. Go see Steve Ostrov and Herbie Lopez, all the great guys out there, Mike. Everybody will take care of you. The official number one volume Toyota dealer right now. They're open till midnight every single night. They got the model year changeover event. If they The few 2019s that they have, they're going to make you an amazing deal. The kind of deal that you're going to want to take home right away. So get on down to 1841 North State Road 7. Tell them that Big O sent you. They'll take care of you at Toyota of Hollywood. 